your presence. And welcome to Let's Talk Ghost. I'm your host, Steve. I'm Dan. And I'm Will. And it is July 6, 2014. We are 100. Yes. Yeah, this is our 100th episode. This is the century mark. And uh, what have you been up to, Dan? Anything? Uh, well, we, we went to the casino and stuff and, and, yeah, lo- and lost lo- our money. Lost big. And and uh, Will, anything? anything? Yeah, I, I babysat some dogs. That's right, you babysat our dogs for us. Um, we don't want to goof around here too long. We do have a... We have a very special guest um, in the studio. Well, not in the studio, but she's going to be uh, on the show tonight. And we're very, very fortunate to have her. Yes, we uh, are. Why don't you bring her in? Okay. And uh, with us tonight on our 100th show is the one and only Alexandra Hoser. How are you doing, Alexandra? Good. How are you? We're doing great. Um, we'd like to really thank you for being on our 100th show for us. Uh, th- this is a special uh, event for us. Yeah, thank you. Uh oh, that's really sad. No. Uh, <laughs> oh no. That's beautiful. That's sad. No. <laughs> so uh, now, you are the daughter of the one and only Hans Holzer, Doctor Hans Holzer. This is true. Um, so now, now, can you tell us uh, what was it like growing up with somebody uh, that that really is the pioneer of uh, paranormal investigating? Um. Well, thank you for asking that. Uh, I think when I'm asked that question, over time, I've decided to come up with a more unique angle when answering that. And I think um, the best way now is to just kind of say that in light of the phenomenon of the years with the pop culture upsurge of it again, which he was during the time when that happened in the 70s and 80s. And it's cyclical with everything else, you know, in life. And it really holds true to today because there really isn't anybody out there like him. And I don't think there is supposed to be. I think when he passed, a lot went with him in the sense of how we research what we call investigations, um, a.k.a. physical research versus just saying the paranormal um, and things like that. So growing up with him, he was my teacher. He was the master. And I you know, one's the best person to have in order to, to grow into a lineage and, and a life where either I embrace it or I, I don't. And um, so I was very magical. It was very interesting. I lived in a living museum. Um, our apartment in Manhattan was very unique. People who came over were very unique. It was a very interesting life. And um, I was kind of like, living like a bohemian style lifestyle <laughs> and he was a vegan so okay you know it was interesting um now you said you grew up in new york city then i did um uh, now I your your dad there. your dad is an Im- immigrant from what country from vienna austria oh, okay he He's came from- over um on the boat like most of our family and um he basically he followed his father uh, Grandpa Leo um, and his wife, Marta, those were his parents, um, they actually began a business in New York. Uh, my grandfather had a tailor shop. Oh, and neat. so my father wasn't interested in that because he already was beginning to write um, about uh, the field, so to speak, in a skeptic manner over in Europe. So when he came here, by the time he was a teenager, he really wasn't interested in, in you know, um, nice cufflinks and shirts that were right you know do you know what i mean he wasn't but his brother was so his brother worked the shop with his parents and he kind of became a journalist and started working for local papers and so forth oh neat now at what point in time did he become involved with the amityville horror house well um i had asked him this and his uh, response to me was well i first said you know how did you learn about this and i was you know a young kid curious about it because he had shown us oh look the movie's out you know it was based right. on his his book um the possession film i am evil to the possession because his theory on the case was that ronald defeo aka butch was possessed and um so he said well you know i read that in the times 
the New York Times like everybody else, you know, and they contacted me, so I went. You know, Austrian accent and all. Oh, yeah. You sound like Dracula. Yeah, thank you. Well, he, he, he looked like Dracula. He sounded like Dracula. It just was the way it was. Yeah. So, awesome. Uh, but, you know, he, he was contacted back then. Um, he was very reachable. You pick up a phone, you call her home, and out he went. He picked a medium of choice to go on whatever case he felt was fitting. They got together, they got out there, and he began interrogating basically the entire town of Amityville, the librarian, um, the town historian, you name it. He went full force, and that's, that's how it all began for him. Now, that case. now, Will, you said you found some information that, that there was a burial ground underneath the house or they found yeah, something near uh, there? It was a um, transcript of your father. He was with a medium, and she said that the house had a uh, burial ch uh, chief buried under, an Indian chief buried under the home. Yeah, basically, it was Ethel Johnson Myers, who was the medium in tow for choice for this particular case. Okay. And um, she went into a trance, and the uh, the way it was called was transmediumship, where you allow yourself to be taken over by the spirit to communicate to the per person from, and that was my father. And she said that there were bones that were disturbed um, and that a little boy had found a skull and kicked it around like a, a ball to play ball and was very disrespectful and happened to have been the head of a chief Indian. Now, how do we know that? My father did a documentary called Murder in Amityville after the book Murder in Amityville. And on camera, the town historians did attest to there was a skeleton found that they did believe that um, it was a chief because the way it was buried, that it was found standing up. And oh. the chief would be buried standing up in the upright position versus the, the regular, I guess, parts of the tribe. And they had this very cultural way of how they would bury their dead, obviously. Mm -hmm. So um, he did go on camera and say, yes, this is what was found, even though he didn't believe the whole possession theory and, and what went on. Okay. Uh, in the case that he got this guy on camera to basically say, yes, we did find a skeleton and it was in an upright position. Hence what a chief would be buried in. Wow. That's, That's interesting. That's, that it, is. It's, we ha it's on film. It was a documentary that he did. It uh, at one point was played, I believe it was aired once. I mean, it, it's, it's fascinating. He did have people come forward. They just don't believe in the case. They didn't really want, they wanted to distance themselves, you know, which a lot of people did back then. And, and in any murder case, really, I mean, it's, it's when you're mingling murder with, with a demon or a ghost, it becomes crazy. You know, a lot of people right. don't want to touch that. Yeah. And according to what I read, she didn't speak directly to the chief. She spoke with another Indian who communicated with the chief. Is that yeah. correct? Well, they had a lot of spirit guides um, are attached to us, if you believe. And with Ethel, she had her own spirit guides. And at one point, my father had to pull her out of the trance because it was getting very dangerous mm -hmm. in the room. And they sat in one of the children's room, by the way, to do this trance. They had the whole house to themselves. I have Polaroids of, of the walls. Um, the typical 1970s wallpaper, um, and there's the, where the bullet holes are, and there's these glowing little lights. And, and his in his use of camera, he was very knowledgeable because a lot of his photography, he knew what he was doing. Um, and so we had all these different Polaroids, and he had all these basic Polaroid comes right out of camera, and um, you know it's these little like shining glowing lights around where the bullets are left marked in the wall where the where the guns were shot. So. He had a lot of that. It was like spirit energy, you know, and he was just trying to kind of piece together what Ethel was saying versus the actual framework of the room where the bullets penetrated and so forth. As far as that, that's as detective work as it got with that. But, yeah, I mean, you're, you're not, you know, it's insulting. The chief isn't going to come if you, again, if you believe in this, that he's going to just talk to you. Who are you? He right. was insulted. This whole thing began, this uproar on the, on the land was that he was moved, and that's that's sacrilegious. You know, it's like the whole thing with you move the mummy, you're going to be cursed and you might die, you know. But don't forget this house, this is not the original or, uh, origin of the house. This house was moved mm -hmm. on this land. This oh. was farmland back in the 1800s. There was problems before the house was placed on top of this soil. So it goes much further back into history, which is where my father came in and really tried to do more of like a, the prequel of the story of what really became Amityville. Oh. Okay. I have one more follow-up question. Did he take what the medium said or when he worked with mediums as truth, or did he kind of use them as a tool to go along with other evidence he had to try to collaborate? Well, what he did was 
he was an academic and a skeptic. That was his job. And his job was not to put down the ability for somebody to have sight and use the sixth sense that we're all born with and, and know and go further deep into the veil right. and pull and extract information from the dead. So he allowed the mediums to come through and, and basically go through the moment. And he would have it transcribed into his book so that you yourself can relive the moment and understand what was going on from the dead and in the living. Mm-hmm. And basically, he did test psychics. And his he said from the very beginning, he used to write for Fate magazine and all sorts of borderline magazine, another 5 by 7 They don't obviously make any more classic ones. And he would say, uh, a psychic is only 50% accurate. And there's a difference between what kind you are. Are you a psychic or are you a medium? Are you clairvoyant? Are you clairaudient? He was very knowledgeable in the types and levels that you came to him with abilities. He wanted to know what ability did you present before he would just say, yeah, come with me on a case. Okay, so right. he tested all these people. It was very serious. I mean, he would go into his lair and he would test them. And if they were full of, you know what, out you go. So okay. This was where he, yes, he did believe because he chose the the mediums he worked with. He didn't really like to say the word psychic because there was a difference on the type of work that each one was able to conduct with him on whatever case. So he did transcribe it. He did believe what they were going through and what they were seeing that he couldn't see. So there was a belief, but he kept it balanced, and his job was really to remain kind of like Switzerland. And let that let them tell the story. Okay. Okay. Now, now, do you know? Um, has there been any any other uh, activity on this property since then? Yeah, it's funny because all the the guys that have their TV shows all you know, of course, want to go there and investigate, and, and right. you've got these huge ratings, and you know, la di da. But I think my whole point of why I'd want to go there and actually find that out is because my father was there just right. like many other places and it's just another place but that my whole point was to kind of showcase that you know perhaps it's okay now perhaps those that had been murdered have been able to be pulled and crossed over right. and are no longer there because the the whole thing is my father said the house itself wasn't haunted what happened was the murders took place which leaves you for a, a grade A haunting because all of a sudden your life has ended. Right. You, you're sleeping and now you're dead. You wake up from a different type of sleep. Right. And that begins the process of the afterlife. And so, you know, that's really where all that came into play. But that he believed that the land had problems. There was negative energy there. There was farm land and farms before that kept burning down. And so my whole thing is to research the area and the town of Amity and put a positive spin on it and, and the, the tragedy is really the murder and stop oh, with I've... the demonic this and the ghost that right. it's a home a beautiful home that horrible things happen in and that happens all around the world and i don't want this to become some kind of big oh oh well you know because that, that's the media part and that's the right. pop culture and i would want to go there under the respect and, and the rules and the guideline of of why i would be there and i don't know of anybody else there they would do it that way right. because, and I'm sure there are, but just the point, like my father was there and there's nobody else that has that relation. Um, so I, I haven't heard anything. I don't think, I don't think you would hear anything because they don't want the media coming to the front door again. And they don't want the people that drive by and take a picture, which they do. And then oh, post sure it on, on, on the social media saying, Oh, look, the picture of Amity. I mean, that's disgusting. Why, why are you doing it? It's a home. Well, Horrible things happen there. Move on. No, you know? that's, that's Hollywood. Well, it's it's also the new generation, and, right. and it just you know it doesn't get old. I mean, this is over thirty years already, and and it's just this 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 idea in people's minds of what it was versus what it really was, right. and, and just things that are going to come out about the crime. I mean, there's a lot of things that were missed, and I think it's it's just very interesting, you know, oh, why yeah. people just cling on to that that whole thing. Well, I don't know. yeah, they watch the movie, and they think that's exactly how it happened. Well, I mean, it, it's interesting. In the in the possession, my father worked with, and I can't pronounce his name. He's, he's long past. Dom, Dominio, Italian director, lovely man. My father got along very well with him, and he allowed him on set a few times, and he helped with the film. Obviously, it was his it was his theory and his casework that um, why it was turned into the really a lot of it was close to what my my father. Um, founded and and believed in with with Ethel, and they really kept a lot to the story in that film. I will say the rest of it's Hollywood, obviously, but you know it it just was a very dark 
area of the right. world and bad things happened and the family that moved in with the DeFeos had a lot of dark history to begin with. Yeah. There was a lot of abuse. There was possibly mafia. There's a lot of things going on that people didn't really realize. Right. They just hear about the murders and then, you know, so okay. it's it's just one of those things that grows its own legs and runs. Right. Now, um, the one question I wanted to ask you was, I read this, and I didn't really read into it, was something called the Holzer Method. Mm-hmm. Is that something your dad created? Well, yeah. It's his name. <laughs> well, well it's, it's your name, too. <laughs> I, I didn't read into the article enough to see whose method it was, your, yours or your dad's. I, I was assuming it was your dad's. It's the who method? Um, yeah, it, the Holzer Method basically was the combination, which is why he was the modern ghost hunter, um, pioneering the field, um, actually from the 1940s is really when he began, um, is that he allowed the the ability to, to be an academic and use science with equipment and um, precision and explanations and factual statements mixed with the medium, the psychic, the metaphysical persona into the equation so that when you're on a case or you're helping somebody or something or an environment, a place or an animal, whatever it be, that you combine metaphysics with science and you get the Holzer method where you're not putting anyone down. You're allowing all factual evidence into play so that your outcome could potentially be a far better estimate or actual answer or left to be still filed under unknown versus saying, well, it's either science or it's mediumship. Right. It can't be both. Well, he said, yes, it can. And that's what the Holzer Method was and what I obviously use today okay. um, and Im- implore people that are interested to please open up both sides and combine the two because when you use the Holzer Method, you're, you're leaving so many open doors to allow more information in and really kind of dice why there's a haunting or what is a haunting and what each case would be, you know, and so forth. So that's what that is. Now, what's your, um, I, I, I'll put you on the spot here. What's your opinion of all the new shows that are out there on, on ghost hunting? Well, you stink for asking that one. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I said I'd put you on the spot. Um, um, well, it's a very dangerous spot because. Oh, I understand. It, you can, you it, can, you can be gentle. <laughs> well, because I obviously know the people. Oh, and, I do too. Right. And I've been around them because I've been on set. Um, and I've done, back in the day, actually thought that if I did an event, that'd be a really great idea um, when I first started publishing and writing and getting, you know, out there more publicly versus just being this quiet little, I'm growing up this way person. But um, uh, there, there isn't anything done that would correlate to In Search Of that my father was part of. Right. And anything that I would be a part of would have to be like that or the storytelling of real history. And, and that's what I'm working on. Right. Okay. And, and that's, you know, I've been, like a lot of people today, you know, oh, you know, you're sent these emails for casting calls to try out and do this. And I'm thinking, great for some people, but I'm not looking for my 10 minutes of fame. I have this amazing right. lineage and respect and, you know, heritage that, you know, I'm, you know, anybody can get on TV today. So it loses that meaning and that message as to, well, then, gee, you call yourself this or that in the field, you get on TV, that makes you better than me. No, it doesn't. It just means that I have more morals and a higher standard to how <laughs> I feel to portray. Now, what I always tell I people have, is love them or I hate them. I have a different reason. I have a different background. Nobody can relate to me. There's just There are people that grow up with stories or people that have experiences, mm-hmm. but when you are living with the man for, for several decades, Right. And before you were born, that was doing this, and and you know it, it has a whole different meaning and a different responsibility to right. it. And so I don't like what's on TV. I'm not interested what's on TV. And and I and I understand it has its following, and that's great. But right. there is a following for the other half of it, which is the history and the lineage right. and the respect to the field. Where many people have been out there in the field researching and gathering evidence and explaining to people. There is a place where we go when we die, and right. there are bad spirits, and you know, also, and just the occult, you know, with witchcraft right. and what kind, white witch, and you know, voodoo and and Bigfoot. Well, forget it. I don't do Bigfoot. I don't do Nessie. My father didn't either, and I can understand why. I'm not interested in running after big hairy uh, people, and I'm not interested <laughs> in going under the water looking for this long neck 
dinosaur looking creature right. that's okay that's all folklore that that's different you know right. a lot of people believe in it that's great ufos i'm very interested in uh other stars and planets that possibly could be inhabiting a different species god knows how much that's really where i'm, I'm focused on and i think it would be nice to see on tv more ufo series and and a different approach on research and not having to if you're a woman show your boobs and have to look a certain way right to, right. to get on do you know like these girl teams and stuff that do that and and just you know, I think if you're really good, it'll be known. I don't think you have to force it in people's face with the YouTube videos and things like that. And I think there's just nothing that interests me right now. I mean, I used to love discovering history, but also that's gone towards the guy that wrestles crocodiles. And <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like I just, oh, yeah. it's, it's become very glam like, and so I kind of feel like I don't know. You, you know, you're not in charge of this. You're not. You're not up at the top. You can't make those decisions. They put these people on air, you know, and it keeps running its its course. So I really can't speak to what's on TV because it has nothing to do with with my father and right. and, and how the research today, you know, is and a lot of groups are doing um, that aren't being portrayed. Well, I know personally myself when I when I do investigating. Most of the fun for me is learning the history of places, and I put a lot of time into learning the history of the place, the home, the land, the city, whatever it happens to be in. Yeah. You have to. That's what my father, that's my point is it's nothing new. He already did that. That's yeah. why he put it in books so that people, it's not just that he was a ghost hunter and investigated. He actually did it and then sat down and had the talent and ability to be a writer and, and get it published by all top publishers, Barnes & Noble, I, all of them. You name yeah. it. He worked with the top of the top and the best of the best because he was also very talented and get unique that way that he was able to present to any reader that he took along with him when he went to Ireland or England or France or in the States or downtown Manhattan in, in Soho. He put those those case findings into a book with the transcripts when he worked with mediums so that the reader could be right there in the moment to understand there is life after death to understand that he felt there weren't any demons, that there was very evil entities, because if you have evil people living on Earth, sometimes it carries on over, and they haven't crossed over. I believe and that. And they're lingering. Yeah. I believe that. And there's a, it's, just, it's just what he was able to take everything and put it down in writing and publish it, and he was, he was one step ahead of the Ghost Hunters before him because of that. These weren't just reports in a lab, you know, and findings. He took it and he created... A platform so that people could pick up the book and read about the cases in Ireland or read about cases in New York and, and to really grasp that it's global because yeah. as long as we have living, you're going to have the debt. And what does that mean? And that was his sole purpose. So there is right. nothing out there that even comes close. And Search of was so great because it was told in the fashion of scripted slash unscripted slash history slash understanding what the person was going through and then you get to the meat which right. is the findings and if right. you can you help that person comprehend why you know i get asked all the time by people you know how do you get started in ghost hunting how would i get started and i always yeah. tell them you want to read up on two people um charles fort yeah. and dr hans holzer and that's oh, a, thank you. that's the best place to start well they were around though see the whole it's history like we go to school and we're, we were taught about our presidents and we have our history book and we go down the line number one number two number three it's the same thing in the field of research physical research you have scientists you have mediums you have the, the the people in between that you know like the fox sisters you have all sorts of happenings but you know the occult and the paranormal there's you always have tricksters and magicians it always was kind of like gitchy back then and it's the same thing today except on a different level because it is exposed because it's taken to that level of it's money making, it's marketing, it's this, it's that. And, and so that's why it's hard to, to even comprehend what's happening today versus how it was and how it, can, it still can be. And I believe a lot of people are keeping um, on that path, but it's just not being portrayed, I think, in the media more so when they cover these things, right. TV shows and films and so forth. Hey, um, we're going to take a real quick break. And uh, now we're going to put you on hold for just a few minutes. Uh, we got to play a quick break, and we'll be back in a few minutes, and uh, we'll play our game, and uh, then we can uh, l let's uh, talk about your book and stuff that you're writing. We'll be right back. 
Okay, and this week we have the Clinton Johnson Band with Every Car Behind Me is a Cop, and you can check them out on our featured artist page. I've always known wrong from right Before the dark run into the light I try to run and I try In the end, I guess I lost my fight. Black lines and cold cell blocks. They got the tough, they got the lock. Oh, here they come and never stop. Every car behind. Talk Ghost every Sunday night from 8 to 9 on DTM WickedRadio.com. Hey, this is Jay Wosley from Ghost Adventures, and you're listening to Let's Talk Ghosts. Okay, and that was the Clinton Johnson Band with Every Car Behind Me is a Cop, and you can check them out on our featured artist page. Cool. Did yes. You, did you bring Alexandra back in? Uh, I'm about to. Alexandra, you there? I'm here. All right, we didn't lose you. Thank no. you for holding. <laughs> it's okay. I'm always on hold. No, I'm just <laughs> okay, Dan, what time is it? It is time for What, what the, the Heck, heck does, does That Mean? mean? All right. <laughs> okay. That was pretty corny. Yeah. Very. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, just... Dan. <laughs> okay, the word this week is illatration. Illa, illa, wait, yeah. Oh, illa, he can't illa, even say it. Yeah. I'm having trouble this week. Illatration. Illatration. Illatration, yes. Illatration. Want me to spell that for you? Sure, go ahead. I-L-L-A-T-R-A-T-I-O-N. 
Illitration. Illitration. Um, has it something to do with uh, my brain? No. no <laughs> nothing to do with your brain. <laughs> How about you, Alexander? You got a guess? Um, illustration. So not illustration, just to make sure. No, it is not um, illustration. Some... It's Ill, okay. uh, illustration. Um, something that has, like, um... Give me a minute. <laughs> I don't, uh... She's probably Googling it. Yeah, no cheating. <laughs> I, a lot. I, I'm, I mean, I think of illustration. That's the first head. That's why I asked that pops into my yeah. head, which is a noun, so I'm just trying to figure out. What do you think, Will? Uh, does it have something to do with the human body? It has, well, a human could do it. Then uh, it's got to be a function of something. Yes, it is. It's leap up and down. No, it is not to leap oh. up and down. Oh. Because I, I'd probably... Illi- something would happen that, like... Illi- it's kind of, is it something that's physical? It, I mean, it, it is an act, but it's not really a... Illustration. Yeah. Use it in a sentence, please. Is it the act yeah, of... Put it in a sentence. Is it Very the act tough. of thinking? <laughs> if... People were walking by and saw Steve performing the act of illustration at a tree. They would think that he was completely nuts. All right, this is a family-friendly show. Uh, <laughs> is illustration uh, involuntary movement? <laughs> no. Um, is it, is it kissing the tree? Not kissing. No. Is it talking to yourself? No, it is not. No. No. Hugging a tree. Leapfrog. So jumping around. I'm a tree hugger. Nope. All right. Why don't you listen? Go ahead. Okay. What is it? Somebody Google it, please. <laughs> <laughs> Illustration is the act of barking at someone or something. Barking. Barking like a dog. Barking. Yes. So uh, that... then my, our rescue pups do lots of illustration. <laughs> wow. Morning, noon, and night. Yes. Yeah. There, there you go. Nice sentence. <laughs> yes. See, we learn stuff on this show. Yeah. <laughs> the word of the day is. Yes. Now, Alexandra. You yes. are an author. Isn't that creepy? Yeah, yeah actually, I've been one for since uh, 07. I, I published my first book. Um, but yes, I I am an author, and I'm a draft writer, so I contribute as well. So Now, you have a new series coming out, mm-hmm. and it is called Ghost Gal. Yes. Can, can you talk about that? I think I can. Um I was going to say, I'd give you an illustration of the story, but again, I'm not a dog barking, so (laughs) some people might beg to to differ online about me, but that's okay. Um, Okay, so basically, uh, for Ghost Gal, I am a draft writer where I supply a lot of real information, because what she is, is she is the fiction side of my father and I. Um, put into a YA novel series, and she is um, the first book of many planned in the series. It's loosely based on ghost hunting adventures of myself and my father, who we all know who he he was and, and still yep. is, obviously to me. Um, and it's it's a multi generational encounter that occurs with with some law, which is the mastermind of a Celtic mythology. Mm-hmm. And basic Hans Holzer has to defeat this again. It had, uh, uh, he's law in World War II. So we're going back into time. It's not a modern day um, series in paranormal and horror. It goes back in time. And what happens is it's, it comes back to my for vengeance again. Created all of this. And um, I have a fiance in the book and basically evil comes back and through the help of my father, we have to now have the wild hunt. And it's a supernatural horror adventure, and it, it basically is based off of us, which is just, I don't know where it's done in this, in this genre, in this topic matter. Everybody's writing stories left and right, but there's nothing based on real people that really were part of the field and are part of the field. And I got um, Ernie Hudson, who played Winston Zedmore in the Ghostbusters film to do yep. the um, forward for the book. Oh, so, wow. That's neat. Yeah. Um, so Dan Aykroyd was too busy, but he loves <laughs> he loves Daddy very much. He is a huge fan of his and actually said, um, went publicly and said that he, my father was one of the inspirations for the film Ghostbusters. Wow. So, um, yeah. So, so we have uh, Ernie Hudson part of this book as well, and this is the first book, and it's available everywhere. Um, Barnes and Noble, 
Amazon and it's in Europe as well as here, Japan, you name it, and Books a Million, it's it's everywhere. So okay. I, I spend a lot of time at Barnes and Nobles. Cool. Especially because they have a Starbucks there. That, well, yes, yeah, but that's not the way it used to be. It used yeah. to be you walk in like a record store, man. You walk in, you smell the vinyl, you look at the beautiful artwork on the covers. There's coffee in the corner. That Who does that? No, no. Yeah. No, no, no. no. And that's not my generation, man. Now forget it. I don't want to walk into a bookstore and get coffee. I, it's, listen, you know, it, it's a different day and age. I get it. I don't like it. But I get it. Um, but yeah, I mean, this this is you know, it's it's paperback and it's also available in Kindle. And you know, um, it, it's just so great. I had you know a couple of seventh graders already read it and they love it. Um, it, it just it's this really clean, scary adventure that's based on two real people in a field that's so popular. And so I'm hoping people will grasp that concept. But we'll see. How many of the, how many books do you plan on adding to the series? We don't know. We already have the second book in mind where, where we have some good, juicy things already in mind of how we're going to lay it out. And as a draft writer, and I supply, again, the, the more history. So when you're reading Ghost Gal, you never know what part in there is really part of Hans Holzer's past. And, and that's the fun of it. And a lot of things that you can't read about that are part of cases that were never published that I have in filing cabinets and boxes of his. Oh, so okay. it, it's really, it's, it's these lovely information of paranormal from him that you're just not going to find anywhere else turned into fiction and it's set back in, in time so it's not of modern day and age which I think is so refreshing from all mm-hmm. the stuff that's being put out there right now don't you? I mean it's, it's great to go back 50 plus years you know. Yeah. Back to the old ways. Why not? And it's not old it's, it's we call old school as a joke yeah, old but it's school, really yeah. not. It's, I mean listen I have bell bottoms you know what I mean? In the 70s I was a kid I didn't wear bell bottoms I hated them but I had no choice. As as an adult, I think they're funky, and they're back in. So this is one of those things where I think it's it's hip, and it, it should be in, um, because a lot of the things that were back in the day, we will come back into style. And Ghost Gal, hence Ghost, instead of saying Ghost Girl, Ghost Gal, as in guys and gals. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, you, you actually write a lot more than just, than just uh, on the paranormal. You write pilot TV shows for TV. Uh, children's short stories, poetry, sci-fi novels, screenplays. Is that right? I write a lot. Yeah. Um, I write, I have, um, I write, I've, I've had a few scripts, but, you know, that's a really tough thing to get off the ground because you have to deal with funding. You have to deal with a whole gamut of issues. Yeah. But, yeah, I've written scripts that, you know, I'm able to create, you know, I understand how to write a script in its arc and, and breaking it up act one, act two, that kind of thing, and, and having dialogue between characters. It's really good to do stuff like that when you're a writer because you stretch out your arms. But my main thing was um, covering different types of writing for, for people in um, with health issues. I did a lot of juicing stuff. I did a lot of um, green style stuff where how you live dictates how you die and what happens after you die. It was more like spiritual in-depth reaching soul searching of covered reincarnation of covered astrology of interviewed people who were well known in the field and are well known still in the field and have had their take on on information so it's not just me as a writer but i also like to put on a journalist hat and ask the questions and keep it like my father did keep it switzerland because i don't know everything and i'm going to die not knowing everything yeah that is a reality, and, and whether I was on TV or on film, it wouldn't matter. I am still one person that has a life plan and lesson, and I have to go through it, and it's never going to be reached to the end, mm-hmm. unless I was a Buddhist monk, which I don't plan on being. Just putting it out there. Okay. I have no plan <laughs> on being isolated in a mountain burning incense. So, no, okay. <laughs> but I, and I burn incense at home, by the way. Uh, 1960s, thank you. Uh, but, you know, it, it just... I do a lot of different type of writing. I like to interview other people. I like to pick their brain. I don't want to be pretentious. I don't want to ever become that way. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like we're all here to learn, and even the famous people. I think you have to learn about other people and other places and other things and their experiences because what you don't believe may believe and what you hope to believe because we're really very small. And I want to widen that. So I do write a lot. I do poetry. I, you know, I, it's the, when you, when you're a writer and you write what you know and you write what you feel and that's being a creative. That's okay. the best way I can right. describe it. Now your mother 
is a Russian countess? She is a Russian countess. That... My grandfather was Count Alexander Buxhoveden. Okay. They helped form the town um, uh, in Germany. It was called Riga in the 1200s, actually a little like 1188 or something like that. Um, there was a book published about my family in German, and he was uh, called a white Russian. He was without country when the war had hit and on the run, yeah, and he, they lived yeah. in castles. Um, they were, you know, like it's like, I guess, politics back then, you know, they were considered, you know, hierarchy, whatever, and my grandfather was a very good after man he's prison um his life was spared he had guns you know he the whole thing i mean it was just an amazing life that he had and that's my mother's father and my wow. grandmother was married to him and she uh, was parisian who was very psychic and he held seances in a castle in italy when they were all living there when he was working as the count, if you will, mm -hmm. and um, he was fascinated with the dead. My grandfather, which has nothing to do with my father, Hans Holder, nothing to do. This is the Buxhoven inside of the family. And what happened in the seance, the story goes from my mother, was they were holding a seance, and my grandfather in Russian, who I can't speak it anymore, I did as a kid, would, would command the spirits come out from wherever and, and a lot of us look up at the sky thinking or the ceiling come wherever you come from like they're coming through your concrete ceiling mm -hmm. oh. i don't know i'll do this and he looked up says come out come out you know in russian whatever and a hand came through a cloud of mist and smacked my grandfather and dissipated back in and he and that was like okay we done for the night <laughs> <laughs> yeah that would that would probably make me want to quit for the night Seance over. So no. that was the running story, but he was fascinated with the dead, and that has nothing to do with the Holzer family. That's the Boxhoven inside. Now, I believe I read online that you have some clairvoyance in your ancestry. Uh, well, yeah, we all we all do. Basically, um, sorry, I'm getting my rescues to be quiet. Okay, uh, sorry. Basically, right. everybody has the ability. It's called the sixth sense, and it's not just mm -hmm. based on a movie with the cute little actor. Um, you know, it, our sixth sense either kicks in or it doesn't. And Daddy tried explaining this to people as well, and that's exactly what I try to do. You have the ability to tap in and know things, whether it's through intuition, whether it's through dreams, or a feeling, a gut feeling. That's not just, oh, I think I'm nervous to go in the car right now. Something happened. There is real truth to that, and that's part of being having psychic ability, which is exactly how my father called it. Um, yeah, I mean, I personally, I help people because over the years I've opened up to it more, and I've always known things as a child, and I've had a lot of stories and experiences as a kid that I didn't want. Mm -hmm. I didn't like it. But I, I to this day, it, uh, people refer people to me because they know it's real, mm -hmm. and I don't ask for anything. I just help people, and then I move on. Oh, okay. No. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to do mediumship. I, I really don't have plans on being like a Teresa Caputo with long nails and great poofy hair. And good for her. That's awesome. That's great. She has her fan base. I'm not. That's. I'm not. I'm not the, the person that sits down at a table and, and reads you. I don't. I don't. I think that's just. You know, I grew up around that. You know. Do you know what I mean? I don't want. All right. It, so. Um. Now, what do you think of near death experiences? Ah. Uh, what do we call them? And, and near death, we do ND, NDEs or something. Um, well, basically... The reason I ask is because I, I think I had one. You think you had one? Well, I had a heart attack about a year and a half ago. Oh, my God. And they had to paddle me back three times. And uh, the one time, I suddenly I just... It was so real to me that I thought I was standing in the middle of an open field looking up upward towards this, like, knoll and these really bright white symbols or buildings were up on there, and I knew I was supposed to walk up to there. Yeah. And uh, but I and I've talked to other people, and they said they had the exact same experience. Well, I I'll take the same stance as my father did before me. If that's your experience and that's what you encountered, then it has to be real. Well, it seemed real. Who was to say it wasn't that you were right. you were close to where you might have gone had it been your time? Then they zap me. <laughs> well, you gotta you gotta be shocked back into your body. Think yeah. Holy no, cow! Did they zap me? When people talk about ghosts, 
what do you think that is? It's all electrical. Right. Like, all my batteries are dying. Oh, yeah. Well, why is that? You're, you're not putting any sense to the conversations. Hence, a lot of these people today are in groups and teams. There's a when you're entering a very charged atmosphere or a situation, anything on you that's electrical or has energy is going to be used to right. to enhance that environment. So, in your case, yeah, you're going to be zapped back into your body. There's tons of books written on this. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's not your time. And what did you experience in that moment? And then you were sent back because you're not done here on earth to do what you were supposed to do. And then you'll go. And everybody has that plan. Okay. Now, I also read, um, you do a lot of volunteer work for nonprofit organizations. I try. Um, I'm trying to get my children, as they're getting older, more part of that stuff as well. You have to give to your be aware around where you live. You, my biggest thing, obviously, for children, because I have two type 1 diabetics, um, that was a fluke of why they got it. What's not in the family it wasn't anything that they could have done. It was their pancreas just gave out on them one day. Oh, I'm sorry and to hear that. So my, my, big, my big causes, obviously, are type 1, which is, used to be called juvenile diabetes, where your pancreas makes no insulin and you'll die. And obviously, a lot of different types of cancer, because we've lost people that we know that had um, different forms of cancer that and animal, animal rescue. I don't even eat them. Stop testing on them. You know, treating right. animals as if you treat people. I mean, things like that really get my goat. And just what you can do to be a better person and giving. If you have more than the person next to you, you can give. If you don't need something because you're not using it after, you know, a year, give it away. There's always somebody less fortunate than you. And my biggest thing is help. You, if you don't have your health, you have nothing. I don't care about the car you drive. I don't care how famous you are. I don't care how wonderful you think you are. If you have no health, you're not living. You're not here. You're on the other side. And that's my whole thing is your health. That is the biggest crux of it all. So, yeah, you, there's just so so many causes and things. And you look at sea life being abused or dying out it's extinct because people are, are harpooning them in one part of the world it's just it's disgusting it doesn't end and a lot of times i feel like i don't want to be here because there's so much beauty and good on this planet yet there's so much evil and it, it just breaks my heart i i totally agree with you hey yeah. we're running uh we're running low on time now mm-hmm. uh alexander could you give us uh, your websites or any information you'd like to give our uh, listeners um, sure. People can just go to www.alexandraholzer, which is H-O-L-Z-E-R.com. So it's my name, .com. And I'm pretty good about updating everything on there. Um, so if there's any interest in the Holzer family and our causes that we want to you know, spread information about, it's all on there. Okay, cool. And if you could send us a, a in our email, if you could email us a photograph and a short bio, we'll put you on our friends page. Yeah, and any links that you have for and your any interviews. links that they that you, that you have to take you to your uh, website and stuff. Okay, no problem. And uh, and of course, you can find that on our website, um, our uh, our uh, Gmail. Okay. So, so anyway, hey, it was really great talking to you. And I really want to yeah. thank you for coming on our show. Yeah, it, it was, was wonderful on- talking to you. It was an honor speaking with you. Oh, uh, no, no, no. Don't say that. I appreciate that. I really do. But no, we're all one. Remember, we're all the same. We all put on our sock one foot at a time. Luckily, we have two feet. Not everybody does. Stop. Yeah. Now, have you ever tried putting both socks on at the same time? <laughs> I don't match. That's my problem. But I'm glad <laughs> I have two feet. Okay. Hey, we got to go. Now, um, it was really great having you on the show. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank bye bye. Okay, bye. goodbye. And th- that was Alexandra Holzer, the daughter of Hans, Ho- Doctor, Doctor Hans. Hans Holzer. Doctor. That was really nice of her to come on our show. Yeah, it was great. She was um, fantastic. Oh yeah, I'd love to have her back again. Yeah. Um, we got about ten minutes left. Yep. Um, well, this, this again, this is our 100th this is our one hundred show. show. Woohoo! Woo-hoo. So we did have a special guest. That was nice. Unfortunately, and this week we are not on YouTube. No, we uh, had, a, had a little foo pow with one of our computers, so we had to kind of run around real quick and try and get something else to work. So we might even sound a little different. Yeah. Maybe slightly, yeah. But, I, was, uh, I was kind of hoping we could get Wilford back for the 100 show. But yeah, we should have, yeah, but we got Alexander Hoser yeah. instead. I, I think she's a better guest. Yeah, yeah. We, we can always bring Wilford back uh, some other time. Yeah, we'll have to bring him back. No, uh... But we have some big events coming up. We do have some events coming up. First of, first of all, uh, let me do my spiel. Uh, put on by the Upstate 
Paranormal Society is a an event coming up called the Finger Lakes Paracon. Yep. That is going to be, um, let me think, it's going to be September 26th, 27th, 28th. The uh, Paracon is actually the 27th and 28th. On the 26th, you can go up there and you can get hooked up with some ghost hunting groups. You can go out ghost hunting. Yeah. And I guess all they're doing is looking for a donation. Yeah. To help some of the locations. Uh, it's a weekend-long event. Uh, it's a fundraiser, and uh, let me I'm reading my notes here. Um, there's going to be a bunch of people there, psychics, mediums, UFO researchers, Bigfoot investigators, palm readers, tarot card readers, um, Reiki practitioners from across the upstate New York. Um, it should be a lot of fun. It's uh, 17 and under. It's free, and it's only 10 bucks to get in. Yeah. So that's cheap. Yeah. And it's in Auburn, New York at the, uh-oh. It's at the uh-oh. It's at the uh-oh. Isn't that like the Hilton Garden? Yeah, it's at the Hilton Garden. I, I got it written here somewhere. I got a lot of notes. I'm trying to... I should have had that a little more uh, clear. Anyways, you can get more information. Just go to www.flparacon.com or you can call 315-406-4866 for, uh, for information. Uh, you can email to flparacon at gmail.com and uh, why don't I have that written down where the location is? Why did you let me have this without without that, Dan? <coughs> I don't it's know. the Hilton Garden. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. It's the Hilton Gardens in yeah. Yeah. Auburn, New York. Yeah. I thought it was on this page. Hmm. Hey, aren't I the professional one? <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, just trying to make that event. Just, uh, you know, that should be a fun event. We're going to be there. Yep. Will will not be there. I will not. I he's, have another. He's uh, he has to go. He's getting a tattoo on his posterior no. of of a dragon. No, I actually. Oh, that's a, the next weekend. I I actually have an event that weekend here in Binghamton that I have to be oh, at. Okay, it's comic book con or something. Robercon. Oh, Robercon at the Roberson Science Museum. Oh, okay. Um. Also, we have our paranormal picnic. We, uh, in a few weeks here, on July 26th, we're doing the paranormal picnic. So anybody out there in the upstate New York area in the uh, northern tier of Pennsylvania would like to come, send us, a, send us an email at, at letstalkghosts at gmail.com and let us know if you want to come. If you're a paranormal group or you're an author or a medium or I don't care what you're, if you're involved in the paranormal field. You just need to bring a dish to pass. Yep, we're going to supply the meat. Bring a dish to pass. Um, you can show up on Saturday around noon, 1 o'clock. If you want to camp, you can camp that night. Bring a tent. Yeah, just let us know if you're camping. Yep. and Yeah, it's fun. We have It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, this is the second year we were doing this. Uh, we had a good time last year. Yeah, we had a great time last year. And... Uh, Hopefully uh, it'll be a little bigger and a little more. It, we'll have more from Will's going to do the, the the truffle shuffle. The truffle shuffle. I don't think so. But <laughs> we'll see. Well, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. There's, there's, there's no rain. It depends yeah. on how much I have to drink. <laughs> yeah. Now it is a family event, but it, we we are not supplying booze. No nope, BYOB. Um, but if you want to drink, you can bring booze. You can bring beer or wine or whatever you want to drink, but we're not supplying any booze. Just please keep it conservatively because there will be children here. Yes, and if you're driving. Yeah. We don't want anybody driving out of here no. and getting into a crash because of the paranormal picnic. Yeah. Being too full of hot dogs. We'll take your keys and we'll call you a cab and you can come pick your keys You're up. a cab! Come pick your car up in the morning. <laughs> That's calling you a cab. Yeah. Get it? <laughs> <laughs> and uh now what now what other oh we're going to be heading up to uh buffalo new york um august 8th august 8th that'll be fun yeah we're going will. up there for an investigation on the uh three ships the uss sullivan's the little uss little rock and the uss croaker which is a submarine and we did that last year we did it last year had and a great in, time. in between then and now uh the the tv show ghost hunters yeah. Taps, it, yeah, Taps was there. Yeah, they were following us around. Yeah, I know that they're. They saw that we did it, and they said, "Oh, we better get up there." You know, let's saw ghosts has already been. Yeah, there. they're just, you know, taking they're, our table scraps. Yeah, you know how it is. Cause yeah. We're, yeah, we're big stars. You know, yeah, we're, we're big time. You know, those guys. They, I know they're a little jealous. It's such a fun place to investigate. It is though. actually. It really it's is. a lot of fun. It's, uh, it's actually, Scott Schultz, the guy that puts it on up there. Um, yeah, from New York X, yep, Paranormal. Yep, he's a great guy. He really is. He's a nice guy. Um, it's actually more fun just to run around the ships at night than in, 
even yeah. really investigate. He, <laughs> Scott, it's funny because Scott Schultz actually dyes his hair white during Christmas time. Yeah, he's kind of a big jolly and guy. He dresses up as Santa yep, for the yep. kids, and he does he does a lot of zombie stuff. Yeah, he does. He always posts that. his zombie pictures. He has one that's on there now of him holding an arm with a baseball bat in it. Yeah, I saw that. And, and, the, and there's a baseball embedded in his forehead. Yeah. <laughs> but he's all dressed up like a zombie. It's so pretty funny. We'll yeah, send he you, does some we're pretty crazy stuff. a shout out to Scott Schultz and yep. his team. Yep. Shout out. Shout out. And uh, anybody else want to do a shout out to? I'm good. Let's do a shout out to Lori. Lori! Hey, Lori. Hey, Lori. Uh, Michelle. Hey, Michelle. She's probably not even listening. Yeah. And John. Probably not. Yeah. But, uh, um, what else do we got? Anything going on? This is our hundred show. Yeah, yeah. We got to have something going on. Oh, um, I thought there was another event we we're doing later in the fall, but I can't remember. What's uh, what are you going to be up to? Anything new? Well, uh, well, we have some we have some good cases coming up That'd for be beepers. Cool. Yeah, yeah, we do. As a matter of fact, there's another one. Um, we're going to be doing a um, theater, and you guys are going to be joining us. Yeah, now, when is that? Uh, it's next month. Next month. Okay. Yeah. Make sure you remind me. No, I... it's this month, actually. Oh, this month. Sorry. It's yep. in July. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, remember you called me. I, I think uh, I think there was a little fupa on DTM. That's why I think uh, what happened was I think Tiffany and Denny Gager, mm-hmm. they were down at the other, they were at an event last night, or Monday night, or Sunday uh, night. I'm sorry, Sunday night. And I think our show might not have got put on because they left it, uh, their tech guy in charge, mm-hmm. and he might not have put it on. Uh, yeah, we apologize. Yeah, so, but you can listen to it on our show. It was yeah, a great. You can still hear our show, the show. You just go to. It was a great interview with, with, with uh, right Jeff Orchowski. Yep. That was, did I say it right? Orchewski. Orchewski. Yeah. Jeff Orchewski. Sorry, Jeff, I butchered your name. And uh, yeah, that was a fun show. He, a great he, guy, he came though. to the came to the studio. He's a big was, fun well, yeah. It was our first actual like live interview in the studio. In the studio, yeah. Other yeah. than uh, Wilford, he's a great. Other guy, than though. Wilford, yeah. Actually, Wilford was our first in yeah. studio interview. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> you know, in the past hundred shows, we've had some. We've had a lot of fun. Uh, yeah. We've had you know we've done a lot of interviews with a lot of great groups from around the country and the world. We we did Drifter Paranormal out. Um, there's a shout out right out yeah. to Drifter Paranormal in Australia. Hey yeah. guys, yeah. I think that was Devin John, if I yeah. remember right, and uh, great great people to talk to. And Steel uh, Town Paranormal, Steel Town who, Paranormal, who won Paranormal Challenge. Yeah, um, yeah. Ottawa Paranormal, Ottawa Paranormal, up, Neighbors to the North. Yep. Yeah. Up in Canada, yep. And uh, we talked to somebody in England, didn't we? No, we haven't talked to anybody. In we talked to a few people with English accents. Oh, okay. The, the yeah. girl there, we had a girl, ghost girl or something. The first the hundred girl. shows were great, and I'm, the next hundred is going to be so spectacular. You can't, uh, I can't remember names because I'm old. Yeah. <laughs> well, and we have interviewed a lot of people. Yes, we have. They're all on our friends page, and they're all in our archives. You can listen to the shows. Now we're just about you down guys to the end of our. Me. That's right. We did interview you yeah. before I became a part of the show. You can show. listen to our show every week at www.letstalkghost.com. You can hear us. On, you can find us on Facebook at just search for Let's Talk Ghost.com, and you can find us on Twitter. Search for Let's Talk Ghost. And we're on YouTube, except for this show will not be. Yeah, we didn't <laughs> video this show. Um, now I still might be able to put it on YouTube. Just put like a slideshow with it or something. I'll figure and, something out. And for beepers, you can find us at bprsparanormal.com. You can find us on Twitter and Facebook under the same, or our YouTube under the same. And look us at Facebook at Binghamton Paranormal Investigation Research Society. Yep, and you can also look on uh, DTM Wicked Radio. You'll find us, and we're also on iHeart. Yes. Search for DTM, and you'll find us under there. Now, you know, for the 100th time, for the 100th time, we'll see you all on the next investigation. (laughs) 